Hi, good evening, and welcome to the Deerfield uh, Town uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting for March 25th, uh, 2020. It is 6 p.m. Uh, we're meeting in the main meeting room and remote access at uh, the municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Uh, Carolyn Shores Ness is remote, remoting in, and of course, David and I are here six feet apart. Um, we've had uh, quite a week, as you all have, and um, I just I want to thank the community for uh, pulling together and following um, Department of Public Health requirements and trying to stay um, separated but still in contact socially with people. Um, it's it's going to you know it's lonely for people to be away, and um, you guys are all doing a good job. And I know it's hard to keep your kids separate, and they all want to play together, and um, it's a hard time for for all of us here. And um, we just thank you for your cooperation to try and keep everyone safe and slow down the impact on our um, on our hospitals and first responders and all. So we'll all get through this together. Um, so uh, let's see. There, there's been a lot of me. I'll just do a quick update. I know Carolyn wants to add a few things too, but um, just a quick update. We've had um, multiple conference calls. Uh, I've been on one with Senator Comerford. We've been on ones with Department of Public Health. Um, there's been just a lot of coordination this week. Um, and with the schools, I know Darius uh, Modesto, our superintendent, has been working tirelessly to try and figure out um, best course of action. Um, we just got notification from the governor that he is extending the school closure until May 4th, which is, I know, hard for everyone to hear. Um, so we're still trying to figure out you know, what that means for everybody. and. Um, They've been doing a wonderful job of putting food together for the children and, and having a pick up and deliver where needed to. Um, they've offered to help our seniors as well, which has been wonderful. Um, Life Path has been uh, delivering foods uh, three days a week to our senior center, and then we're doing a drive through pickup for food. Next week, we'll be beginning um, some breakfast. Frontier is going to be, and the schools will be delivering some breakfast to us that we can fit in with the lunch so that seniors could have something in the morning or late night snack or something like that um, just to just to make sure everyone's fed and um, and then we'll we uh, plan to be going to five days a week for food our senior center was usually serving three days a week uh, Monday Wednesday Friday and with all that's going on we um, we requested and I think we're approved for for five days a week starting next week so I know robo robocalls went out in uh, Waitley and, and I believe Sunderland and may go out tonight just notifying our seniors that, that that is available for them. So if um, if you're interested, you know, please reach out to us or reach out to the senior center. I'll get a phone number a little later on. I don't have it in front of me right now, but um, reach out to us and we can, you know, we can certainly get some food for you if, if you're in the need. Um, I know as, as, as this goes on longer, you know, there'll be people you know and maybe yourself or family members who will wind up with this COVID-19 um, virus and will wind up having to stay home and and not only you know kind of stay home but be isolated so away from family and stuff so the need will probably grow as we get on in this um, process a little longer so um, just you know it is not um, a condemnation it's not a shameful thing it's not something you have to be afraid please please tell people if you have it so that our first responders if they do have to come are aware of what they're getting into um, you know, like I said, everyone's going to wind up with this at one point or another, and we just want to keep everyone safe and take care of you as well. So um, I'll turn it over to Carolyn. Do, do you want to add anything to that? Carolyn's on our, our call, uh, conference call. I, I just want um, everyone to know that we're working very, very hard to um, address all these issues and that we just want everyone to be very careful, be very patient, and be a good neighbor. This is going to be weeks of this, and we just have to be strong together and really, really, really practice physical distancing. It's not social distancing, it's the physical distancing. So we, the more we learn, the more tests we have available, and even the chance of an antiviral being this, you know, um, known is, is the longer that we can keep this from have, spreading in our community, the better off everyone is going to be. Yep, absolutely. Um, 
Do you have anything, David, or do you want to move on? No. Okay. It's, it's just, yep. uh, you've so, had all the right notes. Okay. So we're, um, we had a couple hearings that we had set earlier before all of this happened. Um, one is at 615, which we will open and then just um, postpone. Uh, which would be a body art regulation hearing. So we're just going to leave that alone for now. We'll come back to that 615. And then um, Zach Smith, our chief of uh, South County EMS, will be calling in on a, on a topic as well. He'll be doing a remote meeting in at 620. So we'll, we'll get to that. Um, we've done the COVID-19 updates. Um, so discussion items that we have, we can hit before, you know, in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, we had, uh, so I have a topic here, which is BBC high strength wastewater concerns. Um, this is a topic that um, all are aware that we're addressing our sewer system. Um, we have a couple projects going on and I, people are probably sick of hearing about sewer, but I'll give an update on what's going on. So we, um, we have our one circular clarifier. It's the big circle down at the plant by the river. Um, that's kind of the last process where everything settles and we clarify the water before it hits the contact chamber where the chlorine gets in for now and then goes out to the river. So it's our last process and that process has been broken. That arm that skims the top has been broken for the last year or so. And we've, um, we had an emergency order and the town gave us, you know, appropriation of a million dollars to fix it. So we've been in the process. Bids went out. We've been in the process of bringing back online um, temporary clarifiers, which are the little rectangular ones that came with the building. That, um, that process is very tricky. I mean, they're 50 years old or more, and we've been trying to get those back online. We have got those back online, but it means that we're very limited in our process so and how we can clarify. And we had um, an issue, uh, we, we assume that, so BBC is a, a brewer in town. They do make wonderful beer, a wonderful company that lives in town here with us. Um, when they discharge, it wreaks havoc on our system. It just, a lot of yeast goes in and, and it's, um, it's very temperamental and it just upsets the whole process and the chemical process that happens at the plant. So every time that flush goes through, that's really difficult. Well, there was an error this week where a major flush went through um, when it wasn't supposed to and when we were on these temporary things because we've been trying to drain that circular one so we could get in there and take final measurements to get to our um, manufacturer because it takes five months for them to build the new clarifier and we have to drain that circle to make sure that happens. Well, we were in the middle of draining that thing when this big flush came through and it just wreaked complete havoc with the system. Um, so we finally got back up on, on um, Online, we had some help come in yesterday. They um, they secured one of the valves that was broken because we had water constantly going into that circular clarifier. It's been a crazy week down there. So I want to shout out to Keith um, Millen, who's been doing an amazing job as our chief operator. So um, we got that sealed up. We got it drained. We got the measurements. We got it back online. So we're back to kind of where we were, um, and we have all the right dimensions going out for the clarifier to be made in, in five months, hopefully sooner. Um, so that, that was a craziness that happened this week. So um, we've been dealing with these discharges from BBC um, and still getting wipes in the system. Please stop doing that. Um, fats, oils, grease, you know, we get a lot of, all the stuff I've been talking about for a year still happening. Um, and, and what I want to stress is that it can't because we're only on a very small system right now to try and get us through this while we're replacing this stuff. So um, please, no wipes. Um, we need to talk with, we're talking with our engineer to discuss a process with BBC for um, how they're gonna either find a different way to discharge. We just can't take that water, that kind of discharge and that strength of uh, solids into our system. Um, while we're doing this, so we're, we're talking with how we need to talk with our engineer and with BBC how they can slow that down, find another alternative to discharge into some other waste stream that's not the sewer during this process. Well, in, in about two years when we have the plant up and running, we can handle that, uh, but we still need a plan and there still is a cost to all the sewer users for, for taking on lows, just like we had a cost when we had uh, Oxford Pickle in town. They paid an extra charge because we're dealing with so much of that. It just wreaks havoc on the bugs and the balance. It's a really tricky balance. And 
So I don't want to go on forever, and I have. I'm just trying to eat up 10 minutes. But <laughs> so that, that's been a real problem. Uh, we're trying to, trying to address that. So uh, uh, we're working with the engineers to, to draft that. I'm not sure if you heard back from Dave yet on that. OK, so he's been trying to put that together. Um, as you've seen in the paper, all across the country, everyone's freaking out because there is no toilet paper. So paper towels are going in the toilet. Wipes are going in the toilet. It's completely wreaking havoc on everybody's wastewater system. So please just put it in the trash for now, uh, if you can. Um, and just be careful what goes down there. Um, so we've got another five minutes before the hearing starts. I'll move on from that. And uh, we have the next item is election and town meeting uh, postponement. So do you want to give an update? I've been talking with Barb on that a little bit this week too, but. Yes, so I put it on there because we need to start making some decisions around this. Mm -hmm. But Barb and I have sort of walked back a little bit on it. We'd like to have a conference call, which is what we're planning on doing either tomorrow or Friday, to have a conference call with council, the moderator, her and I, yep. to come up with some sort of recommendation. We tossed a couple things around, but we're still not sure about the logistics of the warrant versus the warrants, because we have one warrant. That we the might logistics. think about splitting that. Right. So there's some logistics to this that mm -hmm. we need to hammer out before we come to you with a recommendation. But right. understand that at it's some coming. point it's coming. Right. Because of the because of COVID nineteen, we can't all meet at Frontier like we normally would. We don't think by the end of April that that's a smart idea so far. Um, so we're thinking that um, normally we have one warrant that has both the election and call the town meeting on the same thing. We're thinking of probably separating those. Um, go ahead and posting the, this is an idea of posting the warrant for the election, um, keeping that separate and then moving that maybe into June and then moving town meeting into June. I know the governor is working on legislation to move it past June for for some, you know, for, for people if they need to, we're hoping we wouldn't need to do that because we need a budget to operate next year and we need the town to sign off on that budget. So that's another area we've been working on hard in the last couple of weeks to deal with that, you know, with the, with the loss of revenue. Um, town, town departments have done a really good job digging through their, their budgets and trying to find ways to, to all come together so we can, um, we can have a, a, a reasonable budget that we can operate town services next year. Um, with all that's going on. We just don't know how long this will last. But, you know, if you imagine you don't have restaurants open, um, you're not getting meals tax. You're not getting, um, you know, a lot of the revenue that we would normally come in is not coming in. So we've got to account for that for next year. So, um, so we'll come back to that at another meeting, just, you know, yes. letting you know that, that that's kind of will be an item that will be on the agenda for the next couple meetings until we figure out what we can do. Um, so annual town meeting warrant to be closed effective 327. Are we still moving forward with closing that I, on the, the bylaw requires it, right? So I, and would then ask we can still the, move it. I would ask that the board s vote to close the warrant as of Friday at four o'clock because that's what the bylaw requires. So I think we have to follow the bylaw. But I don't have a warrant to look at yet. We don't have a warrant to look at. I would. I so I can't mentioned. Um, well, you can vote to close the warrant, and anything that come in, comes in by that time, I will send you an email and say this is what's re been requested. Um, the request I had given you a list of the requests that we had up to a certain date. Um, the issue with the warrant is, is I have to go through the warrant with Brenda and Barbara because I don't know all of the things that. The warrant looks a lot different than it used to. So I don't know everything that's a one-time article versus a boilerplate. Some of them you can read their boilerplate, but some of them may be things that could come off. So that's what I have to wrestle with them about. And unfortunately, all three of us are swamped. I know. So what I would ask the board to do is vote to close the warrant as of Friday, um, as is required by, we have placeholders for most of those articles, like Darius's article about capital. We have a placeholder for that. We have a placeholder for the request, the marijuana requests. Um, we have a placeholder for floodplain. So the the requests that we've gotten, we have placeholders for. Um, How about scam? Do we have a placeholder for the scam? For the yeah, scams for the article to deal with the rent? 
for which which article on SCEMS? Yes. You mean the operating budget or the rent? No, the rent budget. I mean the rent article. Yes, we have a placeholder yes. for that. Yep, we do. Um, is it okay, something that? We, go ahead. No, we haven't been able to discuss that yet. I know. No, and those articles. I mean, I'm okay. We can. I'm okay we can give you. It, it appears it would be not. Um, I mean, not rush to try to figure it out because nobody has any time at the moment. But at some point, we need to discuss how we how we want the wording. Can't that? We need it as flexible. Yeah, can, we need it as flexible as possible. Can the warrant be opened again by the select board? We've done that. In the I past. thought we have. We've done that in the past. Um, we have to close it for annual. I think as we of close it for the public, um, but the select board can always open it to put items on it up until I think a week before the. Well, I don't meeting. know how you guys have handled that. I, I mean, we'll try to because she needs to print them and all that, and if we're extending another month out or something. But right. I just know that we've been able to open it back up, just the select board, and we, we don't take things from the public. So after the right. 25th, If there's something done. that you think is critical, I can check with Lisa tomorrow. Okay. Um, so in the meantime... And then if for some reason the town meetings move to May 27th, we can reopen it to the public for the until the 30th. Well, days we can before. find out because yeah. I don't know that the legislation, because that's actually a, a local bylaw. Yeah, I don't think we can open it to the public after that. The alternative is you hold a special during right. the annual. Yeah. So if there's other things you could post a special town. Yeah. Right, and we've done that before. So the. When I was here before, we did, we maintained that and we didn't let anybody put anything else on. Okay. Um, but we opened it late. So. One thing that, that I would suggest you do is you can vote to close it, and then yeah. if we have to have, if Lisa says we have to have a special town meeting, then we, we plan it like a up. special. Yeah. Um, so anything that comes in after that, we handle it okay. insofar as we can based on following And then the as soon as you okay. have a draft that That's I could look thing. at, I'd love I to look to at that before Friday. I need to sit down that draft, and yeah. so yeah. I need I know. a little you're, capacity to do you've that. You've been a little busy. <laughs> Just a little. Just a little. Um, uh, so I would make a motion to close the warrant as of um, uh, 3-27-2020 uh, for the annual town meeting warrant. I'll second that. And Member, the, you have to do uh, roll call. Dave Wolfram, second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay. And so, so it's 618 you can probably open okay so the um, hearing so what you want to do is open the hearing yeah I'll let um, I, I'll, I'll open the hearing for um, the body art regulations hearing it's 618 uh, now and uh, I'll entertain a motion from mr. Move from that we open the hearing uh, for the body art regulations uh, he's opened it and then so you, you can read that Dave Wolf from second okay. Move to continue the body art regulation hearing to May 20th, 2020 at 6.15 p.m. at the Town Hall, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., 01373, or via remote participation using either teleconferencing or video conferencing. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those no. in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay. Move. And I don't and know five. if. Do we have to close here? What was the date on no, that? You five. continued it. Okay. That's the purpose. 520, of the right? Yeah. Um, okay. I don't think Je Zach has chimed in yet. Nope. I don't think so. We got in a couple minutes, I think. Can I ask a question? Please. Guys, I'm, oh. I'm here. Oh, oh you're hey, here. Zach. Welcome. Sorry, Sorry, Zach. <laughs> Welcome, Zach. I didn't see the reflection, oh, yeah. so I didn't think you were here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, geez. I can't even make it 20 seconds. Yeah. I know. Oh, I know. Well, we're, if it we're makes so you feel better, I know how you feel. I want to thank you for all your work that yeah. you're doing and your team's doing, Zach. Um, oh, thank you. I think you're going to be busy pretty soon. Zach, and Zach has been wonderful. He's, I call him multiple times during the day, and he's very <laughs> cheerful and responds always. Thank you, Zach. Um, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> okay, shoot, what you got, Zach? So I think uh, I, I'm here to talk about this uh, 
any retirement. Okay. Issue? All right. Um, you have the floor. So I, the, this is, I, I've spent a lot of time with our um, Franklin County Retirement Director kind of figuring this stuff out. So I'm going to try to give the 30-second elevator pitch and okay. allow me to answer any questions you have kind of once I get it all out. But the short of the long of it is that um, the county retirement system is divided up into different groups, group one, two, three, and four. And group four is reserved for public safety professionals. So the idea is that um, because of the nature of the work, it's, it's significantly more dangerous and taxing. Um, and also because it requires such a high level of um, ability that we want to give public safety people the opportunity to retire or rather uh, maturate through the system faster than other people. So th what this generally looks like is people who serve in public safety um, can retire usually like six or seven years earlier than somebody who, like a, a teacher or, um, you know, a, a clerical office worker. Uh, when that law was written, uh, they listed public safety specifically as a police officer or a firefighter. Um, and because the law was written before emergency medical services existed uh, in the form it is today, that we just ended up getting omitted from that law. Um, as a result, we defaulted to a different uh, retirement system, retirement group. Uh, the law has been um, updated since it was first enacted uh, to appreciate that EMS is part of the public safety um, discipline, um, but it doesn't place us automatically in group four. What this amendment does is it actually leaves it up to the individual town um, and to know their EMS system best and the individual towns can vote to um, allow it or approve it. Um, the law, the specific law is chapter 41, section 111F um, that governs all of this. And um, uh, I think I, I submitted uh, with my request to the select board um, of Deerfield uh, to acknowledge uh, South County EMS as uniform employees certified at any level by the Department of Public Health as an emergency medical technician, that's the language in the law, um, as group four. And the law as it was interpreted by the Franklin County Retirement Board and uh, seems to be pretty clearly um, phrased is that it's just a simple vote of the town select board in this case, is that it's up to the select board as the appointing body whether or not um, this change should be made on that level. Um, and I, I, will, I will finish by saying uh, the, the end result, why this is important is one, it's for acknowledging the parity that we have with the police and fire departments and the nature of jobs we do. And, and in many cases, even more dangerous, especially with this COVID thing now going on, we're on the front lines, we're the ones that have to be in the back of the ambulance and treating these patients. Uh, but uh, because we are public safety, um, the retirement system allows us when we retire if we aren't acknowledged to be group four now, to appeal our, our group at the time of retirement. And the director of the retirement board stated that, well, yeah, you're obviously public safety. So when you retire, we'll, we'll honor group four. But what that means is that if we retire a few years earlier um, and we weren't acknowledged as group four before that, we end up underfunding the system. Right. So part of this, uh, change now is to basically, you know, do do our work and make sure that we're funding the system appropriately, and then taking care of our providers on the back end, so they're not left in a position where um, they're they're not being acknowledged. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so uh, I I, um, I I think I understand, and um, I just want to take I wasn't aware this was coming I guess it, it was but I just I hadn't had a, I had a little other stuff going on I just had a chance to get my head around it um, I do understand the reason for it I, I, I see that to be an EMS towards the later end where you would typically retire you know it's a very taxing job mentally it's very taxing just like a police officer um, the calls that you go on that the what you're dealing with and then also physically you know, you're lifting, um, 
you know, you're having to lift people, and I know we have new lifts in the, in, you know, to get into the ambulance, but you've got to get somebody out of a house or you know, out of a 50-foot ravine. Um, there, there's a lot of um, strength required and um, you know, ability that you, know, you just don't have at, at a later age that you would have when you're, say, 30 or 35 years old. So I, I get the reason why they would want to, why you'd want to class that. My only um, concern that I just want to do a little bit of backstory and, and understanding on is to um, see how this affects our OPEB, what we need to do for, like you said, if we haven't been budgeting right along um, for this and putting money into the retirement, just kind of the finances part of it. I just want to make sure that we've got all our ducks in a row and that we understand how that's going to impact us and how um, I know we have an actuary happening this year on our OPEB. Um, I, I just want to get all of that kind of the numbers in, in a row and then just try to get all the questions out yeah. in my mind before I just go ahead and vote yes. But, um, I, but I understand it, you know, I, fairly in favor of it. I just need to um, just do a little research first and then I think, you know, I could definitely, you know, table it and come back to a vote very shortly, um, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Zach, at the SCEMS meeting, you, yeah, had a, you had cost estimates, right? Yes, I did. So I'm, um, I, this was actually going back a couple months now at the Board of Oversight meeting. So oh, uh, good. Dale uh, Kowacki, the executive director of the Pacific County Retirement System, did all of this. So we've been, oh, good. he's been looking and be chewing right on this for almost, I think, six months now, kind of come back and in his email. to it. So yeah. he, he did the actuarial crunches on it. I have the numbers in front of me. I'm sorry that you oh. Know, in my, oh, I think I'm seeing in it my now. brief letter I didn't include on. But um, oh. basically the way that it boils down to is the Franklin County retirement system as a whole is um, there, that, that whole system cost is $7.4 million. Yep. Um, by our nine employees being transferred from group two to group four. Now, uh, yep. what it does is it adds $45,000 to that 7.4 million. And he likened that to if um, the town of Orange decided to hire a couple more police officers. Yep. Or if, you know, Mohawk decided to um, make some teachers, get rid of some teachers since they're on the state retirement and actually make them uh, a paraprofessionals, which are on the county retirement. And that this kind of ebb and flow um, you know, for $46,000 yep. every year. And, and most don't even see it, um, like on our individual assessment. Mm -hmm. He, let's see, he broke down the individual towns even by the whole county, you know, what it looks like. And depending on the size, obviously, it's going to affect differently. Sure. But um, uh, let's see, like New Salem's assessment would go up $367. Um, uh, let me see. I'm sorry. I'm just pulling this No, take up here. your time. Anything um, you could email so, me, Zach, too? Yeah. Could you, uh, could you email me that stuff, absolutely. too? Absolutely. I can send this over. Um, yeah, that'd be yeah, great. Yeah, we... Um, when we talked about it, you know, I said, you know, is this something that, you know, the whole system kind of absorbs? And, and he was like, well, that's how the retirement system works. That, right. You know, this is you are employees in. in the retirement system. If, if we don't make this change now, then we're just going to fall short, you know, in 20 years or whatever. Right. Um, I, I asked about, you know, is, is this like the, the difference that this makes? Could we bill? even just South County as an enterprise fund, uh -huh. you know, pull those numbers out and make us responsible for that. Yep. And he said, uh, it, it's possible, but not customary. They don't do that for anything else. I see. And those, that, that estimation of that additional, um, what did I say, $45,000? Yeah. That's assuming that they get no return on their investments, which is how the retirement system stays solvent. So he goes, if, you know, if there was zero percent interest in our market, how about a negative twenty? Forty-five thousand dollars. How about a negative well, twenty? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so I can I can forward you these numbers. That'd be um, great. You know, and obviously I'm kind of I'm speaking for Dale, but his of sentiment was really like, it wasn't you know, I don't even. This isn't. It, it didn't even, he didn't even bat an eye at it. Okay. He was kind of unimpressed at those numbers. Yep. So, and um, I, was, and I, I will. Just, I will 
And, and to make it clear, the forty-five thousand isn't an annual. No, assessment. it's a one-time. Right. That's that's over the life of the retirement for the the group, right? That you're looking. It. Basically. Uh, for the current group. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so like our basically our share of that assessment um is small by obviously, yeah, smaller than that annually. So that right, that that's the additional expense as of today to the system mm -hmm. that's worth, you know, seven point four million. Okay. Yeah, I just I was thinking of that and then just the OPEB, you know, because as people retire sooner, they obviously are on the OPEB sooner and um you know, we just I just want to get my head around that a little bit. But I, yeah, I, I understand what you're asking. I think you you had talked about this when I was on the board of SCEMS a couple of years back, right? I mean, this isn't a new topic if I remember right. No, not a, yeah, not at all. And yeah. and, and part of it was because Dale did drill down with his actuaries and yep. actually, you know, figure out what this would mean for everybody. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Well, when does Casey? Um, when does Casey have us have the actuarial review for our OPEB? It's, Is that right now this year? It's this year, but it's, I or I don't. Is it FY twenty one? It might be FY. It might be. I think. I think it's usually done in the fall. Carolyn, I think it's like, 21, Carolyn. That seems to be the schedule of most people. Most of the people I've talked to are on. I almost think it was in the fall that we did it last time, but I could find out from we, Barb. Yeah, we can find out from Barb. Was, I mean, I think what we need to do is figure out what the OPEB costs are because that's what the true cost is to us as South County right. um, and the town of Deer. So, um, but I hate to wait. But we wouldn't really know until they did do a, a review because, you know, the everything is so widely, there's a wide it's spread difference out. of opinion. R there is. Yeah. 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 No, but I think we could get a quick, you know, just a back of the envelope answer maybe or just a question. We maybe wouldn't have to wait for yeah. the whole actuary, but we could, we could dig I, into that. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I've got, I've got some... I've got a sheet here that he did provide. It looks like, if I'm reading this correctly, um, it would work out to South County. It's uh, $4,300 for Deerfield, eighteen for Sun, $1,800 for Sunderland, and $1,200 for Wakefield. Um, okay. Would be the, the difference. So four, five, six, about, like, oh, I think right around $8,000 okay. difference. Okay, yep. Um, and... Uh, what is, if I have it handy here, we're currently budgeting for retirement for FY21, um, do, 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 retirement, $113,445 for South County. Okay. Um, so we, we'd be adding eight, eight grand to that roughly. $8,000 to that. Okay. Yeah. All right. That helps. Okay, that's, uh, yeah. That helps to understand um, a bit. Whatever you have and can email yeah. Zach, that'd be great. I would just to yeah. get my head around that. Um, um, I would like that we um, try to find out what the OPIP costs are and then vote to do it, or vote to do it and then try to figure out how to finance it. But I, I think I would rather just uh, table it until we can yeah, talk just, to someone about the OPIP costs because... We're not putting enough as a town on OPEB already. I know. So we've got to figure out how we can do South County at a different rate than our town because the town isn't going to put up with us putting a part what we should do for that additional amount. Um, I mean, it won't be consistent across the board for um, SCEM, so with Deerfield. If you yeah, know what I'm talking about. I do. I do. I mean, <clears throat> as much as I'd love it to be, I don't know how to do that yet. Um, no, no. Can't afford that. So what we can do is uh, we got to, so Casey, you got to figure out um, what the, what we should be putting aside um, the rate for OPEB for South County. Okay. 
to cover this change. Um, and then, and then um, we just have to figure out the budget for that. Yeah. You know, it changed the budget. Yeah. I mean, I, I get, I get why the question, and it seems valid, and you know, they have just, you know, it's it's a tough job what they do, and they need the. You know, it's harder to do when you're 60, when you're 57, than it is when you're 27, 37. Yeah, I think we can tell Zach there's consensus that we support this. It's just we got to figure out the finances. Yeah, because that's all. we as a town put aside enough to cover this dif difference in OPEB that SCEM should put aside for. Yeah. You know, you know that problem. SCEM put aside what Deerfield is doing now, but what right. Deerfield is doing now is not correct. Right. It's not so, sufficient. And I'm not sure what the other towns are doing yeah. either. I don't know anyone else who's doing anything. Oh, they're doing more yeah. than your Yeah. Oh, okay. They are. Great. For FY21, based on the Deerfield formula, we're going to be putting away $2,023 <laughs> uh, towards OPEB. So, yeah, you know, obviously we're – we would love to have some good numbers there so we can make sure that the true cost of South County EMS yeah. is being shared yep. by all towns. And it may take uh, you know, and I just I just want to reiterate that this this group four thing, you know, it's not it's not like a, a, a like to have. It's it's kind of operating under the idea that when these people retire, they're they're either gonna be forced to retire later than they would have yes. or they will retire under public safety, and then the system will have been underfunded. Oh, right. And that was and we wanna, more where yep. where Dale was was leaning, that it wasn't like, oh, we'd like to do this, but we need to see what the numbers are. It's that if we don't do this, we're going to find ourselves in a lurch, yep. and we were going to be saying, oh, 20 years ago, we should have done this yeah. You know, if we had a time machine. so. Yep, yep, I agree. We should get on the ball and get it right. Um, okay, so we'll um, just motion to table this for a meeting or so, and... Take it up again. Yeah, I'll make a motion to table this after further discussion. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, aye. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, and Zach. That, Zach, yeah. that was a great presentation. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, very helpful. Very helpful. Oh. <laughs> Uh, just hear my voice. You couldn't see the funny faces I was making. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, but everybody can see mine, Zach. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Zach. We'll be back in touch real quick. Thank you this. very much. Yep. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. So, um, okay. So next on the, um, that's it for hearings and discussion items. We have um, the last item under discussion is uh, draft green infrastructure and climate resiliency policy for Carolyn people. check your email <laughs> we sent this to you in an email Carolyn I think just pretty quickly um, I didn't get a chance to look at that's this okay yet. Can it's, I, it's some of our I, I reviewed it my only concern was just to make sure Kevin had a chance to look at it and Kevin hasn't had a chance to look at it I don't know what I well I for me he hasn't he may have looked at something that was an earlier draft but I wouldn't want you to vote something without looking having Kevin look at it so can we just you could ta how about we table it till the 8th till the 8th Would okay. that makes sense yeah that's fine and that way we can all make sure Kevin sees it everybody else has got it mm -hmm. um so I that's feel comfortable voting on this until um Kevin has had a chance to review it yeah that's fine I could take so, it to him in the morning we'll have, a, we'll have a motion to um to table this um mm. until uh, you said till when? April 8th is April your next 8th. meeting. So, so make a motion to uh, table. Uh, uh, I'll second that. Thank you, Carolyn. Carolyn. Yep. Um, any further discussion? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, David Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn. Thank you. Um, okay. So let's put that in the packet. Um, let's see. Uh, do, do we... There was an item on. Oh, did you have? A, do you want to hit? I on have something? a question. Oh yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> it's um, in the COVID nineteen updates. Mm -hmm. um, I put a memo in your packet. Okay. And I wanted you guys to 
Oh, here it is. Make yep. a modification to the temporary operating changes as noted okay. in the memo. Do you want, why don't I read this? And then? if you want, you don't. You can read it or not. I'll it's up it. to you. I'll but. read it so people understand. So, this is uh, dated March 25th, 2020, of the Select Board from Casey Warren, Town Administrator. Revisions to temporary operating changes. After some discussion with department heads and review of the Select Board Board of Health discussion on March 16th, I respectfully request that the following changes be made to the COVID-19 temporary operating changes. Use of time paid off. Excuse me. Yeah, use of paid time off. There we go. In the uh, event of uh, the closure of town offices or if an employee cannot report to work due to exposure or quarantine, the town will continue to pay said employee on a case-by-case -case basis at the town's discretion. The town may pay employees who are out of work without exposure or quarantine, but who are taking extraordinary precautions and otherwise would have come to work if it weren't for the COVID-19 outbreak. In the event that, the, that an employee defined as essential chooses not to work, the employee may use sick, vacation, and personal time and may run a de deficit up to two weeks. To the extent applicable for qualified employees, the town will comply with the Families First Cor uh, Coronavirus Response Act approval. Um, approved on March 25th, 2020, as amended by the Select Board and the Board of Health, retroactive to the closure of town facilities on March 16th, 2020, effective immediately until the Commonwealth State of Emergency is lifted. The town reserves the right to amend this policy as the COVID-19 situation evolves, consistent with legislative changes. I would also recommend that the Select Board Board of Health vote to follow the governor's uh, construction letter with guidance. This letter clarifies the approach to construction projects that the building commissioner will use his determination effective deployment of inspection, inspection staff based on code requirement within the proper health guidelines for COVID-19 response. So, so just to recap. The code, the code required to take the last paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, code requirements, some of those code requirements for inspections have not been relieved. Right. Um, so there are often 48 hour requirements. I've had a conversation with Bob about how he and his staff are deploying. And what they're doing is they're following the public safety, they wanna be able to follow the public safety guidelines, but certain critical things like gas inspections, those may need to happen. Yes. Um, so when they, can, when they can do this safely, maintaining those dis social distancing requirements, hand sanitizing and, and other sanitation, um, and other hygienic mm -hmm. guidance, they will do that. But they can't just stop doing certain things. Correct. And this guidance didn't come out until yesterday, I think. Right. I did so see that. So this was governor. some clarification on the governor's part to help us move forward because there were a lot of questions from various towns about there this. Is. So this Some was, towns this are was kind why of I requested shutting it. down, or Board of Health are shutting down yes. construction sites when it actually construction is essential, right. is going on. So there is still inspections of foundations and footings and there's inspections of kitchens if wall see, framing if, if people can't get yeah. takeout and they have a kitchen that yeah. needs this is how bob described it right um and they can't cook in their own kitchen because it hasn't been approved mm -hmm. um that might be a critical function just for these people to be able to yep. function so yeah, that was that was our conversation. He really needs to be able to deploy people the way it works best for him yep. under the guidance. Right. That and was the reason that. I asked. We, yeah, we did have that conversation. In terms so. of the paid leave, the FMLA requirements or the federal, the Coronavirus mm -hmm. Act, go into effect as of April 2nd. Um, as I mentioned on Sunday, none of us have any control over this. Right. By and large, if we have sent people home in town hall, which I did with one of my staffers, yep. Um, I have that person remote working and completing assignments and yeah. referring back to me or working, you know, we actually were on a phone call today about yeah. an issue. So in that sense, we have staggered work times. Um, the treasurer's office has staggered time so that they can spread the time frames that people are here mm -hmm. to keep people safer. Um, but we're still maintaining our six foot distance because we yeah. do have that split in these offices by mm -hmm. and large. Yep. So we're trying to maintain that and still keep working. Right. But a lot of times people had no control over this, especially people who have kids at home. Oh yeah. Who their kids now can't go to, out can't go May 4th. To, to school and 
So what we're trying to do is meet the needs of the town, but also be mindful of the situation. And support our employees. These are good people that do good work all the time. And, um, I and it is, felt... to some extent, our discretion how we need to have things working. Yeah. A lot of us are here working. Right. Because it's there's just some paper that you have to shuffle. Yeah. No, I agree. I kind of felt like we would extend this um, and then keep revisiting it. I mean, and that's why I wrote. I made those changes. I talked to council about that as and well. And I know the, the schools are struggling with this same issue as well yes. because, and not every, you know, fortunately we budget a year ahead, so we have money that's been budgeted for these positions. Um, but in some parts of town, and and a lot in the schools, positions are funded through re through um, revolving funds, and that's like. You know, kids come in and buy lunch every day. That money goes into a pot, and that pays for the workers. Well, they're not in buying lunches, but yet they're still working right now, getting food out and delivering it to kids at home so they're fed. So, But that money runs out. So I've, I've asked um, Senator Comerford today, how was that money? The first money that got allotted from the state went to public health departments, and very tight structure on that was only used to manage COVID cases, positive cases, there was no way to move money around. And I said, the next batch of money that comes needs to be somewhat unrestricted to town so that we can figure out what areas we need to backfill because they're not getting funds from revenue. Right. So, um, so we're trying to balance all of that, making sure that our, when this is over, and hopefully it's a short amount of time, we can pull our, all our staff back in and Right. Ramp up the speed again. but And if we have to make additional flexible. changes, I wanted you guys to have the ability to yes. do that relatively quickly so right. that we can yep. change course if necessary. Mm -hmm. So I would make a motion to, um, to accept this memorandum um, of revisions to temporary operation changes per the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, I'll second questions? that. Okay. Any further discussion? David's got something? Yeah. The... Uh, the only concern I have is that they're staying within their budget. If they're going outside their budget, it should come to us for approval before it's expended. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, because there's going to be situations that we're probably going to encounter. Okay. Where that may happen. And we are, we are still, just for the public, we are keeping track of all the CV time. What COVID we're calling COVID-19. We've coded it CV time. So anytime somebody's working remotely or doing something extra or anything related to this COVID-19, we're all putting a code next to it so that we can hopefully get reimbursement from the state and, you know, and, and backfill those, those accounts and eventually. But that's um, one of the reasons right. we're all doing that. When we got, if we get, if there's an account that does run low, we really need to have a, have well, a discussion just, about know, this. I'm just afraid that some departments are just kind of freewheeling and just spending money that they don't have. Well, another another thing that w I was thinking about and was mentioned to me was to maybe put a message out from our department, our board, mm -hmm. that we would um, put a message out to all department heads to really watch your budget. So we understand we're budgeted this year and we have funds for this year, but whatever we can save this year you know, and turn back to free cash puts us in a much better position next year. So if there's a project like, you know, you're worried there might not be a lot of money next year and you want to just eat up all the cash you have this year, we would really be grateful if there was some sort of direction that just went out and said, you know, if it's something really serious, you, you got to do it. We get it. Safety, all that stuff. But if there's projects you were thinking, oh, I could or don't, don't have to really do that this year, or if there's any, any ways that you can think of as we're asking people to look at their FY21 budget, if there's ways they can look at their FY20 budget and say, hey, there, there's a spot here where I could turn back a little cash at the end of the year. It's going to make all the difference because we're already in a tough spot for next year. So just to watch those so larger limit, expenses. So let me, re, let me yeah, make you sure I'm understanding you. <laughs> is you want me to send out a message to department heads to limit spending to critical functions yeah i think so i mean or mainly just the to most put a, important yeah things most they important need to things and obviously okay. safety and and they're obviously budgeted for what projects they were going to do but if there's anything that they can look at and say you know i i, I can hold this back for a little bit or um somehow just we just want to be in the best foot forward into fy21 with free cash when we can get that certified next fall 
Um, obviously, it ends in June 30th, but um, so to just some extent, thought. discretionary spending. Yeah. Yeah, right. looking at what the needs are of the departments as opposed to what the wants are. Because this is hitting a, a one-third of our year. We're not getting any revenue. The revenue that we had budgeted. So we budgeted a year right. for FY20. Right. Expecting, you know, restaurants to be open and all this stuff to happen. But And we got two-thirds of the year in where we got that revenue. But now we have no revenue for the last third of the We're, year. Nobody's going to be happy, but the tax bills are going I know tax bills are going out Friday. It's just just to warn so, everybody. <laughs> so yeah, um, but you know we that will help. We a still need bit. to run a town, so you know we have we have expenses, so that's why taxes go out. But um, but you know, and we're, we just want to be stewards as best we can. Um, I guess when we're on that subject, do you want me to read public comment that came in? Yes. Okay, so I got um, I got some public comment that came in. Let me just find that. So uh, this was a, a message to the, uh, the Deerfield Select Board and Finance Committee from Bruce Hunter, 130 San Gully Road North, uh, South Deerfield, dated yesterday. Uh, subject was salary increases for all town and uh, frontier regional high school employees. He would like to suggest that all proposed salary increases be reevaluated and the effect on the town budget and town of Deerfield in light of the COVID-19 virus pandemic. Um, reasons to place a hold on salary increases in the FY21 town budget. Uh, one, a hold would allow the town and school budgets to be close to a balanced budget with a minimum or no percent increase. Um, two, would allow the town to avoid any reduction in essential services. Three, uh, could provide a minimal increase in property and sewer taxes to residents. Four, the federal government is providing one-time cash payments to most, the most affected individuals, families of this pandemic. Um, the neediest of our residents should be, uh, the neediest of our residents should be burdened with these salary, I think should, should not, not be, be, should not be. Um, uh, let's see, and then sewer users are already strapped with the cost of the wastewater treatment facility upgrade costs. The Deerfield Select Board Finance Committee and School Administrations and Union Representative must have this discussion with all town employees, both union and non-union immediately during this time of unprecedented economic conditions. All of us must do our part in reducing the economic impact to the residents of Deerfield. This show of community commitment would benefit the community, not just the employees. Thank you in advance for your consideration of this request. So I just wanted to read that in so it's on the record and in our, in our thing. Um, there are some of this we can and can't do. Um, I, I understand and agree with the intent of it, but we um, there are already contracts signed with um, we have collective bargaining collective agreements, bargaining agreements in place. so it's not we can't claw those back at this time. Um, but it, it's vowed, and that's kind of why I brought up the point of let's look at our budgets as best we can right. and try and reduce those. My my concern is we I think if, I could be wrong, but I thought the schools were at a one percent for next uh -huh. year can't quote me on that, but I'm almost positive the first year next year was a 1%. And the elementary school budgets um, have only done a one-year contract because we couldn't really settle on a three-year. So that has been signed, um, I believe, and is, is in force at this moment. Um, so um, I've got to get the number on that, too. I just got to check into that. Um, but I, my fear, again, is, is, is our town employees, again, would be the ones that would get shortchanged in this. So. It's something we have to discuss at, in these budget. You know, obviously we have a meeting tomorrow. We talk about the budgets tomorrow. Um, every, all the department heads have done the best they can. Um, and we have, by and large, we have each department has made some sort of cut. They have. I've seen a lot of the the and, list that came back, and, right. and there's more that I still want to look at. And, right. So, and I'm working with the schools to. to they're going to do their part. Hopefully, we're going to request that they. And so that they can that do their was part. actually. What one of those things that we needed to talk about it? Yes. As we go through, but yes, yes. Well, we can hit that now if you want. Um, really, I, you know, I have. You have a motion on the table, though. Oh, yeah, I'm we sorry. Didn't vote on no. You what was the voted. motion? So the motion was to approve it. Oh, the approve the memorandum. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we did that. But David had a question about, and if I read it correctly, it's at the town's discretion as to how they make these adjustments in terms of. 
I just yeah, wrote with it. the approval of the board of selectmen. Um, if there's so, what I want to clarify is if there's threat of a shortfall, mm -hmm. you want to review that staffing, that, that staffing impact or that cost impact. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you want, David? Because I need to make the change in the language. Yeah, basically that's what I'm looking at. It's just, you know, if they are coming into a shortfall that we have to know about it. Yeah. And approve it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then if, if we need to, we can go to the finance board, get a transfer. Get a transfer. Right. If if you know, a request if they if they would but, grant you know, the there, finance there's, there's situations where you know they could be using a volunteer instead of a paid associate on some things. Except if it comes into a training situation. Yeah. If they mm -hmm. have to retrain. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. But it's you know, and certain departments will have their own appointing authorities, so mm -hmm. that would be the question that would come to my mind. Yeah. Um, I think as long as we, you know, you know, we're, we're going to be looking at the budgets pretty closely in the next few weeks, anyways. Um, but I agree, if something comes up, I mean, I would just have. I mean, it is at the town's discretion, and we're the town. So, we'll, we, you know, right. maybe just at the town slash select board's discretion would cover it. Um, because okay. we just want to have that, you know, that, that ability to look at that and either, you know, approve a deficit spend that line or not. Um, I, I, we really don't want to. We just don't know where this ends. You know, exactly. everybody's, everybody's in the same boat. Um, but we, we really are concerned about the budget this year, FY20 still, and, and going into 21. For shortfall. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so there's a motion, there's a second. Any further discussion? Carolyn, are you good? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, aye. Thank you, Carolyn. Right. She's got a delay. I think so. Yeah, must she's be got a delay. Yeah. Okay. I just remembered she yep. has a delay. Um, okay. So let's see. I should have a delay. <laughs> <laughs> so then. Um, so you read public comment. You read Bruce's comment. Yes, I did. Um, yeah, I can. And we can, we can talk about that again tomorrow at, at our meeting. Yeah, so, we'll take that to that yep. meeting. Um, and because I want the finance committee to have that, that message from him as well. So we, um, while we're on the subject of budgets and school, so uh, I've been talking to Darius a little bit just on the side, like telling the situation that Deerfield's in, and I'm sure the other towns are, are all kind of scrambling too to figure out what they're going to do. And um, I had been asking if they could look at the budgets and see if there was anything that they could, um, you know, they could pair out for, the, for next year for FY21. And he reminded me of the policy. <laughs> so mainly, um, the, what, which is that through the vote of the select board or finance committee or both, and we could bring this up tomorrow again to discuss so we can all get on the same page. He said, if you come up with a number and send it to us, I'll give it to the school committee. They can look at their budget and see what they can do. Um, so I was kind of saying, well, can you see what you can do and let us know? And he's kind of asking for a number. So um, our, my thought in talking with our town accountant and just looking over all the budgets that we had, if we could get a, I was going to make a motion to request 30,000 from the elementary and 30,000 from the frontier budget. Um, we're putting up, you know, quite a lot more than that, but you know, through all of our budget cuts, and I th we thought that that would get us there. And I know they may not be able to do all of it, they may be able to do more than that. Um, but just take an honest look at that, knowing that we're all gonna be in a really tough spot next year, could they, could they do that? So mm -hmm. yeah. that was what I would, I would make a motion to request that figure um, from the select board and then again bring it to the finance committee to get their blessing or see what they had for thoughts. So we need a figure. Yeah, and that would be uh, 30,000 from each budget, which, uh, which the public should understand. And, uh, I have a question. Uh, for Terrace, I have a question. Okay. What, what are each of their budgets versus the 30,000? Oh, they're, you know, it's like $4 million in one. And I'm trying to think of the other one. They're, they're large yeah. budgets. Yeah. These are, millions. you know, compared to the town, it's a, it's a large, you know, they're 70% well, of they, the town budget. People can be very yep. creative. They'll get to 30000 for you. I hope so. I, I think they I mean, I know that Darius is very willing and, um, you know, willing to look. He understands. What he, he, too, is 
getting, you know, dealing with the budget. So he, he gets where we all are and we're all in this together. So I think that they're more than willing and he hasn't brought this and I haven't brought this to any of the other committee members yet. So this will be, you know, news to them because we had just all signed off on the budgets. I think Frontier did as well, right? Uh, but so we were, thought we were done, but the, we did say at the last meeting we may be back and here we are. So um, you're right, Chris. I think they, they'll be, able, I'm hoping they'll be able to find that in their budget to help us. And just so the public knows that, you know, uh, that's 30,000 from the elementary school budget because that's just one budget. But when we ask for 30 from Frontier, that's a little over 60,000 from Frontier's budget because the other two towns then give up money and we're just a portion of that. So. Um, we're asking them to find, you know, over 60,000 in the frontier budget um, so that we can get to 30 out of ours. Um, well, so we'll, you know, just so everyone understands, it's a bigger ask than just the 30 from frontier. Um, but I'm hoping they can do something there for us. So, and for, and for the other towns, because I know that Waitley and Sundown are going to be in the same boat without revenue coming in. Um, so we could bring that tomorrow. Do, do you need a vote on that, or we can all vote that tomorrow at tomorrow's um, meeting? I mean, just I think it's part of a joint budget discussion. Yeah, it would be useful to hear what the other two people think about. Yeah, that. Yes. they have a different number of mine. I'm, I'm open to okay. listening to that. And then maybe we'll see. We did get a, a revised budget from one of the departments late in the day, so I want to okay. discuss that with Brenda Okay. and see where we are. It's still Great. not a pretty picture. But oh, I know. It's we, still we're be doing tough. everything we can. We, we had are. a conference call on Friday about it. Okay. Um, so I guess. The what What are we um, doing with recreation? Since no sports are being done, I I had a couple email mails. People wanted to know are checks being returned for T-ball stuff like that. So we'll have to get with Sue. We have to talk to Sue about that. She's actually working from home too. Yeah. Um, so we'll get that on the on the radar and see what's going on. Yep. You know, she was probably hoping yeah. it'd be a couple of weeks and we'd all get back to it with a short season, but it looks like That's what now that the schools are closed till the fourth, it's probably not going to happen. So that makes sense. We'll have right. to we'll have to reimburse all that. So there goes you know another bunch of revenue for that department. Um, okay. Um, so the only the last thing that w was um, an item that was unanticipated 48 hours prior to posting was the MVP construction projects and that was something you just wanted to hit back on again. What I wanted to do is have the board vote to continue with the construction projects and the reason this came up is we had a conversation amongst um, Chris Curtis, myself, and Zach Jerniak because we're not sure where the, what the program is going to do in terms of extending. But I want the board to ask themselves whether they want to continue with these projects because some of them could be, uh, some of them I think are very important. And mm -hmm. we have deadlines that we have to hit. Yep. Some deadlines may be impacted because of COVID-19. In fact, one of our bids has to be postponed because yeah. of it. The opening is postponed two weeks. So it's going to, there's a trickle effect out with the contract. So really what I want the board to memorialize is that they want to continue with these projects because they can I be do. continued. No, I do. And I think, you know, if any, I know one project was going to be tight as it was. So if anything, this might give us an opportunity to get an extension on that project. Perhaps. Perhaps. Yes. We don't know, but. I, kind of say, I, think, I think we can do all the projects. I think we'll get an extension for all the projects. We have a legitimate stories we're building our story so i think everything is going to be okay we have sent out various chris curtis did one i answered a question that our representative at the mvp office had um i'm cautiously optimistic but i did want the board to understand yeah, that we understand the requests came out yeah. how do we want to proceed because MVP is not even sure what's going on. Of course, I know. It's well. I think we just go forward as as best we can right now, and hopefully everything works out. Um, but we understand that we'll just deal with it the way it comes. Right. And I'm glad you have um, some support in your office now. I wanted yes. to thank Jennifer uh, Garnett for for joining us here at Deerfield. She's our mm -hmm. new assistant town administrator. Um, when the building's open someday, you'll get to meet her. Yes. <laughs> or when see her on TV open. at some point. But. Just a wonderful addition to our office, and I'm so grateful she's here and giving Casey some help and uh, Pat some help and yes. all of us in town. So we're we working that out. What we're here. doing is onboarding and doing the best yeah. we can. There's a lot. Under these circumstances, crazy there's still a Crazy week for her to lot. start. Yeah. <laughs> it's a crazy yeah. week for her to start. But yeah, she's thrown done right into a fire. amazingly well and uh, is excited to be here and working forward with us. So 
All right, so it sounds like the consensus from the board is to continue yes. with the MVP projects? Yep. Yes. Would you take a vote? Yes, I'll make a motion to continue with the MVP projects as uh, planned. Dave Wolfram seconded. All set. All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. Um, I have two other unanticipated um, items. Oh, okay. Uh, one what? was the tree cutting uh, the Eversource was doing on Gray Street. So I've been getting a lot of emails and stuff like that. So I had Kevin do um, a check on it and where they're cutting right now was around their substation. Um, but I did email Melissa um, um, Hancock, is it Hancock? From, yes, um, Hancock. Eversource. Yep. Yep. She's really, really nice. She, she got right back to me. She um, emailed the Arborist so there is going to be some discussion, hopefully, between us and the arborist and Melissa on what actually is going to happen on Grave Street. The, the problem is they really do have to clean up the line. And um, truthfully, it's better that the, if they have to take down more than a third of a tree, the tree is ultimately going to die. Yes. yes. So it's better to take the whole tree and then plant a new tree. Right. So That's there is a tree planting program. I verified that with Kevin. Okay. Um, there is a tree planting program. So if they actually have to take down the whole tree, then they will, um, or if there's a question of if it's too much, um, I think it's better to err on the side of caution and have them replant a new one because ultimately the tree's going to die and then it's a town responsibility at some point. So um, I, I think I hope there's going to be some discussion. I think there will be just some discussion, and um, but ultimately the, tr the the power lines have to be maintained. So, yep. Um, I know they trimmed up the not, trees on Conway Street this week as well. I think that line right. is one of the major lines into town, so yeah, that's this one is reason. Not intervening to stop Eversource. This is to hopefully work with Eversource so that there's minimal um, impact as right. possible, and that. And you know, restoration. People aren't making decisions about tree removal versus, and that there actually is a tree planted. You right. We've got to make sure that they know that we want that tree back in the ground before, you know, right right away so that it has a chance to live. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, if you put too late and it's, and it's not going to live either. Yeah. Uh, I think the whole idea is to be, um, you know, work this out. Yeah. I think and part of the problem is the, one sec, one sec. is the communication Eversource had with the residents on Grave Street. It almost in, came across to the number of residents that they were just going to clear cut all the trees on Grave Street. Oh, so there was miscommunication. Yeah, yeah and not just trim for the lines. Yeah, which is, okay. which is a, a big difference. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been trying to work with, um, you know, to have some back and forth. But Melissa is very, very good, and she is trying very hard to work with us. So. And it's hard to, you know, you can't go knock on a door right now either, so it's hard to get the message out. I know, out. and Kevin did. Kevin was wonderful. He went out. He surveyed what was happening. He did try to figure out what was going on and, you know, that kind of stuff. Yep. So kudos to Kevin. Mm -hmm. Thank He's you, Kevin. He's got a lot of stuff to do. Yep. And then um, the other thing I wanted to bring up is um, uh, Kelly Dixon hiring uh, an additional nurse. Um, Casey, have you reached out to Kelly? I was trying to work out how that would work. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm trying to figure that out right now. Because we right now we're trying to just figure out our response to COVID-19 here, so we've got to figure that figure out how we would bring somebody on, and so you know how are you going to handle a new, an unanticipated hire with personnel board. And, you know, I, those are the details that I need to work out a little bit better before I call and say, hey, we'd like to hire you. Cause I don't even know what we would hire her at in terms of a pay rate. Um, well. We, and what she would well, do. We well, she, she would work with Lisa. She would work with Lisa and uh, anybody on the line mute, please, except yeah. Carolyn. Okay, go ahead, Carolyn. Uh, go ahead, Carolyn. Sorry, we just had oh. some feedback. Yep. Uh, uh, she would 
she would work with Lisa in um, Maven follow up. The problem is, in a, in a few, in another week or two, we're going to have to work for Lisa. I recognize that. Yeah, that, so for the public, the concern is that right now we belong to the um, FERCOGS Health District, um, and we pay a certain amount of money each year, and we, uh, um, we share a town nurse with many other towns. And because of COVID-19, a lot of other towns in Franklin County are piling onto that bandwagon. So what they've done is shored up a little bit more of their... Um, their abilities and they've hired on two more nurses at, at Franklin County Franklin, Franklin Regional Council Franklin of Governments. Regional <laughs> Council of Governments, FERCOG. They've hired on a couple nurses there, but um, we just when this when this hits and we know it's going to, it just barely is into town now, um, if that. Um, we're so when you get um, when you when you have a COVID positive test, you then need to send a nurse out to um, make sure that person is, is um, isolated and quarantined, and then you need to start tracking where all the all these people are from. And then you know we are going to get some help. Um, we're hoping the state's working on help through other um, other nursing students and that kind of stuff to track out all the people that they have been in contact over the last week or so. And then those people need to isolate, and then those people need to be tracked you know, how many people they were in touch with. So it's an immense amount of work and we're going to need, we're all just going to get buried in this area and we're going to need some help to deal with this stuff. Um, there's, a, there's a lot to do in the nursing sector and that is just going to get compounded over the next couple weeks here from what we understand and looking at everywhere else in the world that this has hit so far. Um, so we feel like there's going to need there's going to be a need for that. I just want to make sure we that need we to have, have some the, sort of an outline so that the we need a structure. so that there's the expectations of the town are outlined as well as what the expectations on the part of the a prospective new employee would be. And we don't even have a job description right now. So that's the reason I'm a little bit leery about calling somebody because it makes if we don't have those things settled. What it's going to make it harder for her. Please lock down some hours with her. That's all I'm asking for. And that's all she does it needs is someone, to, you know, to commit some hours because otherwise the hours are going to go to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why this is important. So, to, to get on this. So the, this, this is, is not, Chris Harris again with a question. Uh, Carolyn, this is Chris Harris with a question. I assume that this is uh, somebody maybe retired from the nursing profession, et cetera, or that you can get independent contractor hours from? Yes. Um, She's not. How is it structured? It's not a full time employee. No, it's not a full time employee. No, she actually is a nurse up in Eagle Brook, and um, she also is on the Board of Health in Greenfield. And I've worked with her, you know, over a few months in um, at, at, on MAPCO um, meetings because she, show, she comes as Greenfield Board of Health. So I've gotten to know her, and she uh, has lovely personality, just like Lisa. So um, she would be a really great addition. Sure. And um, Greenfield has hired her on for 16 hours, um, I, you so know, these temporarily. Are just kind of, these and are I just, just kind of temporarily add-on hours that we're looking at. So, uh, that makes sense. I, that we lock down some temporary hours before some other town does that's all yeah i get that um well i i would make a motion to allow casey to kind of straighten out what we need to do this week and um and 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 reach out so i mean i'm in favor of getting the hours because i know we're going to need it um we got to figure out you know I, i'd like to know where that where the money's going to get budgeted from and then you know set out a clear um you know, tasks that we would have. So just a quick job description for these, like, it's like, a, you know, hiring a contractor out of contracted services, that kind of I idea of just getting somebody to add on some hours here to help offset the time. Lisa is now in many more other towns. She still is wonderful and is attentive to our community. She's been very attentive. She's been great. I just think um, it hasn't hit us all yet. And in the next week, it's going to hit. And we're, we're going to be without any help and we're going to need to be reaching out. You know, the Board of Health can't do all this by ourselves. So 
we're going to need to be reaching out to these these um, patients to figure out what they need, you know. And then there's, uh, you know, talking with Lisa today, there's all the other help that we need as far as, um, you know, when these people are now quarantined, they can't get to the grocery store. Who, who's going to get food for them if they live alone, you know, if they don't have any family? The family can't be in contact with them anyway. So there's a lot of other aspects. And that is not something our nurse would do, but that's something that the nurse would maybe reach out to us, the Board of Health, and then we could look at, volunteer services to try and help you know fill out i know there's this 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 community has been wonderful they've been stepping up in so many ways and offering to volunteer and so there's there's ways that we can put some people to work and um to help each other through this um it's just we just don't know what it all looks like yet it's all going to hit us soon okay so I'm, i am in favor of that for each case and mm -hmm. if we have more than a few cases it's it's it, it's going to be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, we just need to have someone. Uh, all I want you to do, Casey, is call her so she knows that we really want her on board, and then you can sort it out, okay? Okay, we'll give Casey some time to put that together and give her a ring and in the next day or so and get that done. Are, are, you, um, are you good with that? Does anybody have any other questions? Dave, I'm how do you feel that. Yeah. about that? Yeah. All right. So I will approach her and figure out how to lock down some hours and, and yes. tasks, yep. a and framework just, that she would come in on, like, back to us you know, you. supporting the community activities around COVID-19, yes. um, supporting the MAVEN work that Lisa's yeah. doing that she might need help with here she, in yeah. Deerfield. Yep, for Deerfield um, people. And what other, what other activities that she could be supportive mm -hmm. of. There's going to if, be so many. I mean, once once we get testing capabilities, I know this is pie in the sky dreaming, but we're going to have to set up that stuff. There's going to be, you know, taking people's temperatures. There's so much to do. Well, I, know I think that we just need to make sure that we, that everybody understands that this is in support of what what the health service vendor services that we get through the cog. That's you know, Lisa right. really Lisa's bailiwick, and Lisa's mm -hmm. very. You know, very, very willing to work with us. Yes. Um, hopefully that would relieve a little bit of stress. But um, if we do get hit harder than we expect, at least we would have that yeah, ability support. to ramp up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we'll probably be looking at a minimum of eight hours a week. I would talk to, uh, let me talk to her and see. Yeah. Because I don't know how spread, how much her time is spread. So. Okay, right. so just you'll report back to us yep. and figure out what you've All done. All right, I'll probably okay. send an email once I talk to her. Anything else, Carolyn? Do you have no, anything? No, no, okay. I, I just wanted to make sure we were moving on that because Forward I'm, I'm just worried this is going to come so fast and, and we won't be prepared. Right. Yep, as much as you can think, try and think about all the stuff that it, this has impacted us. It's really hard to get your head around how much, yeah. you know, but everybody's been great. John, uh, Chief Bachurik has been great. Jen Bartek, she's been doing so much with our seniors and working with Christine and Triad. And um, Zach has been doing a ton. I know I've been here a bit, and everybody, I just everybody's full, full in on this and trying to help every way they can. But we know whatever we come up with is going to change in a couple days. <laughs> Anyways, so um, just thank you, everybody, and thank the public for heeding these warnings and trying to stay home as much as you can and wash your hands, don't touch your face, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we'll I, get through this. I just reiterate, you just have to be so careful and be patient. This is, this is a long-term thing, but if we hang in there, it will make such a difference in our community. It really will. Yep. You know, Just be a good neighbor and we'll get through this. Yep. There's no question we're going to get through this. It's just, it would be lovely if you know, the impact is a lot less yep. than, yep. you know, a community. Then if we did nothing at all, yeah, yeah. we would we would overtax the health care system. So I think we will yeah. anyways. But and we're not going to be done by Easter. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. Um, we know the schools won't be done by Easter. So, um, okay, so thank you, everybody. Please call in uh, if you have any questions. Oh, I wanted to... Um, just bear with me one second as I uh, look for something. Um, I wanted to look for the phone number. Um, so the phone number to reach out to the South County Senior Center is 413-665-2141. I believe that's the phone number um, that you could call if you're interested. Is that right, Carolyn? 
Yes, that's okay. the correct number. Yep, and that uh, so that's 413-665-2141. If you are stuck at home, if you need food, um, if you need lunches, we're um, we're doing a drive-by lunch right now, but if you're stuck at home and you need it delivered, we can work that out too. Um, again, we're starting with five days a week for uh, lunches being delivered to the senior center. And again, we can deliver it to you if you need it. If you're homebound, we'd love you to stay home. Um, and then uh, the, the schools have stepped up and they're gonna provide breakfast for five days a week um, that, w that we will send home with your lunch. So you'll have something for the next morning or you'll have something to snack on that night. Um, and then we can expand that down the road. We're, we're starting with 25 right now, but that can grow. We just need a heads up. So please, if you're, if you're interested, let us know. It may take a day or so to get you started, but um, we can, you know, let us know. We want to be able to support you all out there, especially our seniors um, and, and, and people that are, have needs, you know, kids that, you know, it's tough with everyone out of work. Everyone needs help and we're here to do that. So please let us know. Um, I, along those lines, Trevor, I've been reaching out to LifePath on um, community services, you know, that could, the, you know, our home services, mm -hmm. make sure they have enough PPE and, um, you know, just what their procedures are. So if people feel that they are eligible for that now or, or feel like they have to stay home, please let us know and we'll advocate for you. Yes. Yep. We want to do everything we can to keep people home and, and not around other people. So for as long as we can or needed. So um, with that, please stay safe, everybody, and I'll, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I move that we Make adjourn. That motion. And a second. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Dave Wolf, I. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs>